Zero. Hi, I'm Jason Zamorano with Keller Williams Realty here in beautiful uh, Redlands, California. I help people buy, sell, and invest in their dreams. And today I'm interviewing uh, Mike Wolf, who is a, a legendary investor. He's actually been able to become financially free from his investments. And I'm just here uh, asking him a few questions for you guys. So, hey, Mike, how's it going? Hey, it's going great. Thanks so much for uh, having me. And I, I like that. Legendary. I like that. That makes me feel really important. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> the legendary Mike Wolf is in effect. All, All right. right. So are, are, you, are you ready for these questions, Mike? Bring it on. I'm ready for the interrogation. I got this bright light on me, so I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Excellent. So, you know, we're just kind of curious, myself and, and the viewers, I'm sure, how did you get started investing? Well, I got started by mistake. I, I'd like to be able to say that, you know, back 24 years ago when I did start, I had this plan to become legendary, but it actually all kind of came by mistake. I uh, uh, was a realtor back in the day, so I know I know exactly what you go through as a realtor. I've been there, done that, and I just started off helping people buy their principal residences like so many realtors do, and over time, um, I, I wouldn't say I got sick of it. I, I still enjoyed it. But you know, you're dealing with a lot of emotion. People put a lot of emotion when they're buying their principal residence. And over time, I started to uh, attract some investors here and there. And when I worked with these investors, I noticed that they didn't care you know, about the color of the paint and the color of the carpets. It was all about the numbers. And that really resonated with me. And so I saw what they were doing. I, I had a knack for finding them great deals. And I saw what these investors were making and I saw what I was making in commissions and I wasn't complaining it was it was all right money that I was making but they were making a whole lot more than me and so over time I started to emulate what they were doing learn learn from uh, what I saw them doing and you know in addition you know since I had the knack for finding these good deals as I started to get enough money to do it myself I started to buy these properties instead of handing them on a silver platter to the investors. And so that's pretty much how I got uh, started in a nutshell. So a much longer uh, story than that, but I won't bore your viewers. for. I could talk for eight hours on, on how I got into it, but that was basically the gist of it is I just saw what the investors were doing, um, emulated, and then uh, just kept, you know, I'm a big fan of, uh, even to this day, of education and learning more and more strategy and, right. you know, so I got into this by mistake. My very first property, uh, I, I live in Calgary, Canada. That's where I got my very first property 24 years ago. And uh, had I not bought that property, I would not be legendary like I am today. I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd probably do it from <laughs> nine to five jobs. So I'm glad I bought it. Yeah, you wouldn't be legendary. You wouldn't be financially free. And more than likely, you'd still be you know, hitting the nine to five, right? Yeah, I mean, who, who knows? It, you never know what would have happened, but I'm just thankful I pulled the trigger because, um, you know, I, I remember I, I wanted to buy this property. I'd done my due diligence on it, and then, you know, you have that inner voice that starts to tell you, oh, maybe I forgot to do this. Maybe I forgot to do that. And you start to second-guess yourself. And right. so I almost talked myself out, but I did it. And, you know, uh, I always tell my students that real estate isn't, uh, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's, it is a building game for sure, and uh, you know I'm glad I that was the that was my foundation. I'm glad I started and pulled the trigger, and it led to, you know, obviously a lot more deals after that. So I'm I'm very thankful I did it. Well, that's awesome to hear, especially for uh, a young real estate agent slash investor as myself um, getting started off my feet. Why are you so passionate about real estate and investing? Well, here's here's the cool thing is a lot of people ask me that, and you know the funny thing is real estate. I mean, homes are just made out of you know drywall. It's bricks and mortar. It's not really that exciting in and of itself. But mm -hmm. the thing that's really cool is one, uh, every time a house goes for sale, there's always a reason behind it. Nobody just wakes up and says, "Oh, I'll put my house for sale today." There's always people are either moving up, they're moving down, divorce, you know, death whatever there's always a story behind it and so I don't even like the term investor I like the term problem solver the more problems that we can fix and the more people we can help the more money we make so we really get paid to, to solve other people's problems and that's what I love about it is that uh, you know I've, I've been able to do you know thousands of transactions you know between myself and my teams over the, the past 24 years and 
I know that I've made a big impact and difference on a lot of people's lives doing that. And uh, so that's number one. Number two is there's no other investment that's as lucrative and safe. Once you know what you're doing, it's a very safe investment and you have other people you know when we create revenue properties we have other people paying for our investment it's very highly leveraged there's a lot of tax benefits to it and as I mentioned earlier I'm really big on getting educated and so I like to learn every you know as much as I can and I love to take that knowledge and pass it on to my students and teach them so that they can skip the roller coaster ride that I did to get where I'm at and have a much you know straighter path to the, to the top and to success but that's what makes real estate so exciting is that uh, you do get to help people and uh, most of all you get to create a life of freedom for yourself if you do it right and if you put the right teams and the right people in place you can you can really uh, have a lifestyle of freedom and I'm, that's what I preach right now it's definitely endless opportunity out there uh, for everyone who's watching as well as myself and, and you've helped me realize that now why invest in Texas versus California I mean I'm from Texas we're gonna have a lot of viewers here from uh, actually I'm from California I'm sorry you don't even know where you live anymore <laughs> yeah I, I just got you know it's been a long day Mike anyhow uh, I'm from California actually and I'm sure there's a lot of viewers today that are gonna be from California as well so you know why again why invest in Texas versus California well there's several reasons for that you know when I pick a market and I, I've worked all over Canada and all over the US and the first thing I look at when I pick a market first of all is is that market landlord friendly and what I mean by that is if I get a bad tenant in my property how long is it gonna take me to get rid of that person who's maybe not paying rent maybe they're trashing my property that's gonna affect my bottom line that's number one so if the government is really in favor of the tenant then I don't want I don't want to deal in that state and California happens to be one of the worst places uh, in that regard in that you can get a bad tenant in your property totally trashing your place not paying you a dime and they can stay there upwards of a year if they know how to work the system in Texas I can typically get rid of a bad tenant within a month month and a half two months at, at the worst and so it has a much uh, lower effect on my bottom line that's number one number two is the prices. I mean, in California, in general, especially where you live in Southern California, it's it's the numbers are ridiculous. And right. number number three is is not just the price. I don't really care. I'm not necessarily looking for inexpensive homes, but I want to get a good bang for my buck. I want to get a lot of rent relative to the amount that I have to take out of my pocket to buy that property. And you know, at one of the auctions that I go to in uh, one of my favorite markets in Texas is, is at the Houston, uh, there's an auction that takes place there. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But I can get properties you know, for, for $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 that are going to rent for $900 or $1,000 a month. It doesn't take me very long to recoup the money that I take out of my pocket. You know, so even if that was, if all I had was, uh, let's say, fifteen thousand dollars in my pocket, if it gives me nine hundred a month, before I know it, I've got another fifteen thousand where I can go back to the auction and get a second property and keep expanding. In California, that's not even going to get you shed. That's not even a down payment. So yeah. there's a lot of other, a lot of other factors. But the other truth of the matter is, uh, you know, California is having a lot of problems financially. Texas is the opposite. It's doing very well. So there's just a lot of different uh, pluses, and, and uh, I'm sure you know this, but California also has a, a horrible taxation system. So a lot of high net worth people are leaving California and moving to places such as Texas and Florida and other places where they can reduce their tax liability, and that does not help a market. So I'm looking for places that are going to grow, appreciate, and we're going to get the best bang for my buck. So it's all about ROI, and ROI is, is uh, affected by all those items I mentioned uh, earlier. Okay, so obviously you're looking at the population growth, you're looking at things like taxes, also bigger returns and less financial risk on your end as uh, a problem solver slash investor, right? Absolutely, and, and you know, but it's, it's not all about price. I mean, I can go get $10,000 homes in Detroit as well. I don't want to buy them there because that economy is in really big trouble, and it's a one-industry town. When I look at a place like Houston, they're building the world headquarters for Exxon, and you know that's employing you know thousands if not tens of thousands of people uh, in addition to a whole diverse economy and so you know we, we look at a bunch of different things we look at a lot of different things in the demographics are people moving there are they moving away there's a lot of things we ask ourselves before we get into a market and as you know I'm not 
doing, you know, if I was just buying one property here, one property there, that's one thing. But if you want to make your business scalable and get yourself a lot of properties, which eventually gives you that freedom, uh, it's really important that you do a lot of homework before you jump into a market and start building teams. So that's really one of the key points that I, I'd recommend for the viewers is is do your homework or better yet find somebody who's already done the homework for you. I you know I, I give my students a lot of information so they don't have to go through all those uh, steps. Right, right. And that is one of the benefits. You've already been successful at doing this. You've done your homework and uh, you can help you know small time investors get to that next level. Now well, that's what, that's, what I, that's what I I mean when I first started out I didn't really know how to be an investor properly. So I emulated people that I saw being successful at it and we're doing the things that I wanted to be doing and that's really the message find people that are smarter than you uh, doing the things you want to do and emulate and collaborate that's uh, you know and learn from them sure sure and so what exactly are tax deeds well um, you know when, when I mentioned earlier that we become problem solvers one of the problems that counties have uh, all across the United States is they need money, obviously, to fund the roads and keep the schools open, their fire and police uh, departments open. And that money, typically, yeah, that comes from property taxes. So when somebody doesn't pay their property taxes, eventually the county has to have a way to recoup that money. And uh, what they do is they create what's called a tax deed. So they're basically, after a number of years, it's not like the person's one day late on their property taxes, but if they're two, three, four years la uh, late, and they're making no attempt to get caught up, the county will eventually put their, their homes up for auction. And so we see these properties uh, with opening bids of whatever the back taxes were. So in the case of Houston, which is my favorite market across the U.S. for a number of reasons, which I'll, I'll get into a little later, uh, we see properties, we see single family homes start with opening bids of you know, $5,000, $6,000. They'll usually get bid up, you know, sometimes as low as ten or eleven or 12000 Sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's 20, and the fancy, pretty homes will sometimes get bid up over 100,000. But the bottom line is we can get these properties uh, for pennies on the dollar, and at the same time we're creating win-wins because one, the county would have to shut down their schools and and shut down their fire and police departments if they didn't have this revenue coming in. Home, these homeowners, you got to remember that they're they've been delinquent for years, and they've you know if they haven't made their car payment, their car's already been repossessed. If they haven't made their credit card payment, that credit card has been cut off, but they've been allowed to stay in their home for a lot longer than they normally would be able to because the county knows that eventually, ultimately, an investor is going to come bail them out. So we're creating a win-win, and even after we buy these properties, we can sometimes help the previous homeowner to get back into home ownership. And so once again, it gives us an opportunity to solve a whole bunch of people's problems and at the same time make ourselves a, a pretty decent return. So, so tax deeds are really uh, a remedy that the county will, will use to, uh, uh, to get this revenue and creates a really fantastic opportunity for investors like myself and hopefully some of your viewers will get uh, interested in that because it is one of the uh, best ways to get started even if you don't have a, a lot of money or even no money there's ways to do it with no money and that's some of the stuff that I teach right I think that's what's so um, exciting and, and you know so unique as well is that you're teaching these strategies to start from low capital and actually build your way up now <clears throat> you also uh, teach how to purchase properties at the auction correct absolutely I, I run a, a four-day course in Houston where we actually learn all the steps because when we buy these auctions the deals are, are phenomenal uh, but there's also a lot of pitfalls and, and you can't just show up at the auction and not having you know done your due diligence so there's a whole lot of steps so I basically give my students a blueprint on how to do it properly uh, the other really cool thing that I've created is I'm a, I'm a very busy investor I've got a lot of things going on in a lot of different cities and in two different countries for that matter and so I like to build teams and so for instance in Houston I've got realtors, I've got property managers, I've got uh, my rehab crews that fix up the properties and then I've also got what I call my bid by proxy team and these guys will do the stuff for you that normally you would have to do on your own so for instance uh, I've got people that will drive around and videotape the properties for you to make sure one that they're still in existence because sometimes they get bulldozed and we don't know that and that would be a really big mistake we'll talk about mistakes later um, 
we, you know, they, they basically do a lot of your due diligence for you. Then I've got other people that will actually go to the auction for you. So what this allows is that you can actually bid at the auction from anywhere in the world without having to fly to Texas every month. So I've had clients from as far away as Australia take my course, I teach them how to do it properly, and then they delegate and use a team, and the team does all the work for them. And so what I've done is I teach my students how to do real estate, how I do real estate, which is a lot of is delegation. You can't scale your business to the point where I have if you're trying to do it all yourself. It's definitely not a, uh, a solo uh, sport. This is a team sport, and I've created the, uh, the infrastructure so that people can do this from anywhere in the world. So you've already got people on, on the ground as foot soldiers doing the work for you, and you never want to get emotionally tied into any of your properties, correct? That's one of the biggest mistakes I see investors make. Is when you let, it, uh, and this is for any business. You know, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Besides the real estate, I've owned a lot of other businesses, and one of the things that has made uh, me successful is I treat all my businesses, whether it's my real estate or I, I used to uh, own a pub and a tomato sauce company. I have a very diverse uh, background, but I don't have any emotion in any of these businesses. I didn't buy the pub because I thought, oh, it's really cool to say you own a pub. I bought it because I saw an opportunity. It was a failing business that somebody had started. They had a lot of emotion in this business, and they unfortunately ran it into the ground. And this was one, at one point their dream. I guarantee you'll never own another pub again as long as they live. If you go in with business sense and you bring the right people in that are, are best at the job. And so when it comes to real estate, I've got people that are way smarter than me at what they do. The person who goes to the auction for me is way bit better at bidding at an auction than I am. Because guess what? I may have learned how to do it once and maybe I've done it once or twice, but this person who goes there month after month after month, eventually they surpass you. And so it's all about getting the right people on your team, treating everything as a business and doing what's going to give you the best return. And so a good example of this auction is people will often fight over the prettiest properties. I like to bid on the stuff that isn't that pretty, but to me the prettiest property is the one that has the most you know, digits on the paycheck. That really makes the property uh, prettiest. It's not you know, the, the colors, it's not, it's not about how big the, the home is, it's all about buying the properties that are going to give you the best return. And quite often the ones that aren't that pretty have a lot less action on them. So I could go on and on about how you need to turn this into a business and keep emotion away from it. One of the best ways to keep emotion away from it is to have other people that to them it's just mundane. They go to the auction every single month. It's just another property to them. When you go there, it's like, oh, I want that one because it looks really nice. That's a big mistake. So uh, any business you get into, treat it like a business. So you're not looking for travertine walls, tiled walls, right? Not at all, unless I'm getting it for a, a good enough deal that uh, that is going to put you know the the numbers in my pocket that I need to make it worth my while to do the work. But I can go so, buy a pro I can go buy the the properties that are a lot cheaper, a lot uglier, and create value uh, for somebody else on these properties and make a bigger paycheck than the ones that I'm you know investing a whole lot more money to get into. You got to remember, uh, you know, we're not always just competing against investors, but the pretty homes often we're competing against people that want to live in that property, and those people are going to pay top dollar. Sometimes they'll pay more than than the retail price. You go on the MLS and buy it for cheaper because people, when they go to an auction, they have this competitive spirit where I want to, you know, they want to win. And to me, winning isn't getting a property. To me, winning is getting a good property at a good price. Sometimes right. uh, the best deal you do is the one you don't do. So I guess we'll, uh, we'll stay away from the Taj Mahal then. Um, <laughs> now, you mentioned um, competing with the bigger banks and the auctions and things like that. I mean, how can small-time investors actually compete with the big banks and some of the hedge funds at some of these auctions in Houston, for instance? Well, here's, here's one of the cool things about Houston is that it's, it's in Texas, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. They have a few different rules than the other uh, states that are deed states. Uh, have in place. So for instance, uh, one of the things a lot of people don't know is that, okay, if you're the high bidder at the auction, you own that property, and, and by the way, you own it free and clear. If there's a mortgage on there, that mortgage disappears. All the liens disappear. And that's uh, one of our due diligence steps is to make sure, because there, there are exceptions to that, and our, our job is to make sure that we aren't buying one of those exceptions. But if we do our homework right, we're buying a property free and clear, no mortgages, they get wiped out, no other liens, they all get wiped out, including the IRS, by the way, they get wiped out too. And um, you know, our, our goal is to get these, uh, 
these properties with the best returns. But one of the things they do in Texas is even though you have full ownership the day that you're the high bidder, they have what's called a redeemable deed. And what this means is that the previous homeowner has six months where they can come back and buy that property off of you. Now in order for them to do that, they've got to give you a 25% premium. So what that means is when you're the high bidder at the auction, one of two things is going to happen. One is you're going to make, uh, you're going to get at that home free and clear. If you follow my steps, you're going to get it for pennies on the dollar and you're going to save a whole lot of money on that property. The other thing that could happen is that homeowner is going to come back and let's say you paid 20000 to buy that property. Well, they have to give you 25000 to buy it back. Uh, in addition to that, anything that you do to the property, uh, there are certain exceptions, once again, and I teach this in my course, but if you had to put on a new roof, and let's say that cost you 10000 previous owner has to give you 12500 a 25% markup. So everything you do, you're going to make 25% on in six months. Imagine you can make 25% on your money every six months. It's phenomenal how quickly your money will grow. To make a long story short, the reason I'm telling you all this is because it's a little bit more complicated. In most other states, you would just go buy the property, the homeowner can't come back, and you own the property free and clear. Banks, hedge funds, all the big players, they don't want to do these extra due diligence steps that I teach my students how to do. So they would rather go where it's really easy, where they just either get that they're just going to get the property, there's no uh, other things that can happen. They just want easy. They want to push that easy button. And the reason they want to push the easy button is these guys get paid, they're using other people's money. And a lot of these people are on salary. They get paid the same amount. So they don't want to do complicated stuff. They want to do easy stuff. And to them, they're not going to, they don't mess with tech. They don't go to Texas for the most part. We see very little competition from the big boys at this auction, which is why I love it. Because that's one of the other things you have to look at. It might be, you might find a place that's got the best returns, but if you're up against people with billions of dollars of other people's money and you have zero chance of getting a property, there's no point you being there. So right. that's one of the other things that we look at is what is a competition. In this case, it's not that fierce, which is why I love it. So you basically just explained um, further ways that investors can monetize their investments uh, by not only purchasing the tax deeds, but then also uh, making additions to the home that then can be you know, profited from, right? Yeah, well, this is some of the stuff that I teach is how to, to maximize your returns. There's different ways to play with that. And I've got different types of investors. I've got some people that come to me, and they have very little money. And for them, I usually recommend, let's get a couple of properties. We'll find ones that are very unlikely to get redeemed. Because making it 25% is great. But if I can buy a property for you know, 20 cents on the dollar, if I can get that property for you know, $15,000 and sell it for 80000 if I don't have a lot of money, that's a good way to, to raise some capital and get yourself in on the game. Do that a couple of times and then buy a property to hold. I'm a really big fan of buying to hold because when you have a portfolio filled with properties that are putting money in your pocket every single month, now you've got freedom because you've got money coming in before you wake up. And you don't have to go to work anymore if you don't want. Uh, the money comes in whether you're on the beach, whether you're giving back. It doesn't matter what you're doing. That money is always coming in. So I'm a really big fan of building this portfolio. But some people aren't in a position to start off doing that. So I like to help them with that. But then I get other people who have you know, deeper pockets. They've got some more money. And so I recommend, hey, let's get some of these ones that are likely to redeem. Get some 25% coming in every, you know, 25 every six months. And then we'll do a few and, and turn them into long-term rentals you know, we can play a much bigger game. So it really depends. All my uh, investors and students come from different walks of life, different amounts of money. And so what mm -hmm. I do is I, I like to sit down with them and strategize and figure out the best way to give them the best returns and get them from A to B as quickly as possible. Well, that's awesome. So you actually have different strategies for, you know, different, different levels as far as people and their investments in life. Um, what action can you, you know, advise the viewers uh, to begin taking today to make sure that they become financially free and ultimately fulfill their, their purpose in life? Well, I think, I think the most important thing, and I think you, you hit it on the head, it's not just all about money. I'm a really big fan. Every business that I've owned and will continue to own, it has to fit in with my lifestyle. I get offers across my desk every single day and a lot of stuff that could potentially make me a lot of money, but then I look at the headache factor and the stress factor and that's not really congruent with the lifestyle that I want to lead. And so I recommend to your, that your viewers that always think about, you know, what, what's going to get you to where you want to be? What's going to give you that, that freedom? And, and, you know, whatever that freedom looks like to you, it might not be my lifestyle. Whatever it is that makes you happy and lights you up, 
But to me, the easiest way for most people to get there is real estate. One, because it's very lucrative. Two, is it can be very highly leveraged, uh, uh, both in terms of time, using other people's time, like my teams, using other people's money. Um, let me give you an example. Um, I have I have a student who uh, took my took my course, and basically she works at a dentist's office. And so I told her, you know, go talk to the dentist that you work at, and see if they want to invest with you. Because dentists don't typically want to shut down their practice, learn how to do a strategy, fly to Texas every month, build a team. These are a lot of there's a lot of moving parts to this if you don't know what you're doing. And to somebody who's a busy professional, they don't want to do that. There's a lot of people with money that don't have a clue how to invest it. If you become educated and you know how to help these people, and once again create a win-win, and that's what real estate's all about is always win-win. If you can help them to invest their money, you have the strategy. Now you take what's a lose-lose. You have somebody who's got money in their bank, doesn't know what to do with it. You've got a strategy, but you have no money, and now you collaborate. Now you've turned a lose-lose into a win-win. So to me, one, get yourself educated or team up with somebody who's already got the education. Start building uh, definitely passive income. Don't just, uh, to me, um, you can build income in a lot of different ways. A lot of people create what I call recurring revenue, where the money, you could buy rental properties where the money comes in every single month, but if you're the one collecting it, you've created yourself a really... Uh, horrible job. Property management to me is one of the worst jobs on this planet. To me it would be like buying a McDonald's franchise thinking it's going to give you financial freedom and you're going to be able to travel and do all the things you love and then you're the guy going and flipping burgers every day. So really make sure your business is congruent with where you want to get to. Make sure you have the right people on your team and if you have the right education and mindset the rest of it will fall into place even if you don't have a lot of money. And this is some of the stuff that I not only teach, I preach it because that's what I do with my life. I, I only do things that I love. When I look at my to-do list every day, everything on there is something that I want to do. I don't put stuff on there. I don't do paperwork. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't know how to work a hammer. I don't know how to paint. So I've got people that do that. And a long time ago, I used to think I was saving myself money by collecting my own rent. I will never do that again and I don't recommend your viewers that you do it. So create something that's congruent with your lifestyle. Don't just focus on the money, focus on collect, getting that money stress-free where it shows up in your bank every month without you having to do the work to get it. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've run into investors who actually want to purchase near their personal residence or and or they want to get their hands dirty, they want to paint, they want to save cash. In the long run, they're actually just creating jobs for themselves and they're kind of limiting themselves. Um, now, as far as actually getting in contact with you and possibly booking a uh, half-hour free strategy session, you know, how would our viewers today actually get in contact with you? Number one, I see the number there and, and, and the email and the uh, website as well. But uh, what action can they take to get in contact with you and, and find find out more information? Yeah, well, they can either uh, phone me toll-free at the number on the screen, which is one 888 That's 1-888-265-0662. Or they can email me at MikeWolf1, M-I-K-E-W-O-L-F, uh, the digit 1, at Shaw, S-H-A-W, dot C-A, which is for Canada. So it's not dot com, it's dot C-A. And I'd be happy to give them a half-hour... Uh, strategy session and like I said it's not one size fits all which is why I like to have give people individual attention because I get people like I said from all different walks of life and they all have different goals and you know they don't all uh, get from A to B in the same way because they're all looking for different things and tax deeds are great for some people and there's other strategies that might be better suited uh, for some of your viewers depending on, on where they are in their in their life and what they're trying to achieve well, awesome. That's some powerful information, Mike. Again, the legendary Mike Wolf. Uh, thank you for this interview, sir. It was great, great learning from you. And uh, we'll touch base another time and talk some more. Yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for having me, Jason. I appreciate the uh, the opportunity. Hey, thank you. Bye bye. Take care.